Welcome to 5 Start Weekly everyone. This week we take a look back at that hard earned result against the pesky DC United side and we talk about that developing situation with Ezekiel Barco. All that and more, coming up. Welcome to the show 5 Start fam, I'm AJ, this is Tanner McLeod. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button. Now there's so much to get into in this match, but let's talk about the game itself first. And uh, of course, we went down early after a ridiculous counterattack by DC. Yeah, it was beautiful, actually. It was fantastic. Yeah. It, was, it was beautiful football. I enjoyed watching it, aside yeah. from the fact that it was against my team. Exactly. And uh, But, uh, you know, Jose Martinez came to the rescue again and set another MLS record. And uh, we put away DC, Wayne Rooney, and Yamil Assad. We put them to bed. And, uh, you know, I think... Uh, you know, frustrating at first, but all in all, a you know a good, decent win at home and a much needed win. Yeah, absolutely. At the beginning, it felt like it was going to be a lot of the same old, same old. Another, how are we going to draw or lose to a team at home that we have no business losing to, especially being a bogey team mm -hmm. that DC United is. They were feeling confident coming off of a win against Vancouver. Mm -hmm. They were prepared. They were mm -hmm. ready. They had a lot of energy in the first half, and they were very bold. They attacked Atlanta United. They didn't mm -hmm. just sit back on the counter. There were periods of time in the first play, I mean, first half where they had the run of the play for a while. Mm -hmm. And Atlanta United were very, very poor. The counterattack, like you said, was fantastically executed. Mm -hmm. Wayne Rooney maybe didn't do a lot in front of goal, but I thought he had some very good passes that helped mm -hmm. connect their attacks. Mm -hmm. Yamil Assad was lively. Um, they, they, they had chances, honestly, and yeah. obviously they took their one with the counterattack like we talked about, and Atlanta United were poor again. It was the same old mm -hmm. when it came to attacking a team that was sitting back when DC didn't have the ball, which they did. They sat back in, in two banks of four, and Wayne Rooney is kind of a lone man up top, and they defended, and it was, again, slow sideways passing, a lack of incision, a lack of desire, a lack of intensity, and eventually it just ended up being a direct ball, a cross that finally found a target. Mm -hmm. Joseph Martinez attacking it, and the keeper probably could have done better, but still give credit to Joseph for, again, being in the right place at the right time. Great ball by Tito. Great too. ball, yeah, great ball yeah. by Tito. And he, his crossing was actually a bit wayward in the first half, but mm -hmm. thankfully he found it on that one, and mm -hmm. you could see how satisfied he was in his celebration oh, yeah. to Joseph scoring. He was stoked. And Joseph, you know, gets another goal, mm -hmm. goes in level at the half, and thankfully, that was probably what Atlanta needed to go into the half level because, right. again, they weren't very good in the first half, but they didn't prove going into the second. Yeah, they definitely did. And, uh, you know, uh, so Frosted Orange, Andrew Carlton got his first MLS start, and uh, boy, did he make an impact, uh, especially, well, uh, he got his first MLS start in place of Ezekiel Barco, which we'll get into all that later. But, uh, yeah, I mean... Great ball and, you know, um, a, a very similar but um, slightly different um, back stick uh, header by Joseph. Uh, how he is just free in the box. I mean, how... I don't know how they're not marking him with like three guys at this point. Usually they uh, are, but I mean, off a set piece, there are too many people in the box. Yeah. What's well, sad about that is that Carlton won't technically get an assist because it did deflect exactly. off a DC United player, mm -hmm. but that was what you needed from Carlton. Mm -hmm. He beat his man off of a corner because... It was a weird corner routine, and I was worried for a bit yeah. the chance to be lost there, but he beats his man, mm -hmm. and then he puts in a dangerous ball. Mm -hmm. Maybe it wasn't the final ball that found it because of the deflection, but mm -hmm. it was with pace into mm -hmm. a dangerous area against a team that struggles defensively, right. which is what you needed to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, In the second half, Atlanta started becoming a lot more direct. The third goal, a little bit of luck, but that yeah. second goal, good ball put into a dangerous area, and Joseph finds it because... That's just what he does right now. He just knows where to be at the right time to score goals. Mm -hmm. And that's what the best strikers are good at, is finding that timing and just knowing where that ball is and putting it away. Yep. And he did that. And I think that that's something that maybe Atlanta didn't need to think about. They do cross a lot, but it's never necessarily a direct cross. It's mm -hmm. a pass, 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 sideways, sideways, sideways. Okay, now let's just put a cross into a one man who usually is just Joseph at that point in time is being mm -hmm. marked by two center backs. And too often those crosses are wayward. Yep. Maybe Atlanta United need to try to be a little bit more direct. It might not be as beautiful on the eye at times, but if they can get that first goal again, which we talked about, the first goal is so crucial for Atlanta United mm -hmm. because when they can go ahead, it forces teams to play. And when teams have to play, especially at Mercedes-Benz, they struggle unless they're the best teams in the league. Mm -hmm. And you've seen that from the best teams in Red Bull and NYCFC and in Sporting KC. They were able to do that, especially when they get their counters right. But these teams that are the lower teams, the second they have to come out, they're there to be had. Exactly. And right now, Atlanta United are too passive in the first half. They're not pressing enough out of the get-go, from in my opinion. They're not 
you know, taking the game to these teams. They're letting these teams settle in, get their defensive shape, and then play the way that they want to play mm. on the counter. Atlanta United really need to work on being, I think, more aggressive, more direct in the first half and trying to take the game by the scruff of the net. Because exactly. if they can get a goal in the early stages, it forces teams to panic because they know they have to chase the game. Right. And I think that's something that you really need to look at moving forward because, let's be honest, even though they won, they didn't look that great on the whole. Yeah, I mean, and especially early, like you're saying, the urgency isn't there from the the get-go. Um, and especially against a very poor DC United defense um, I think that's ultimately why we won this match is, well, you know, they, uh, you know, they can be had, but, you know, teams that have a stronger defense, it's going to be more difficult and it's not going to be, you know, where we cruise at the end of it because, you know, it's just not going to happen every single time. And so that's why, you know, there is that criticism at the end of the day, even though you see the scoreline, it's 3-1, you're like, oh, happy days, it's not a big deal, we, uh, you know, we uh, beat our bogey team and, you know, everything's happy, happy, uh, happy dory. No, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of things still within the, the, the scheme of the match that, yeah, I mean, it's troublesome against, you know, if the, the likes of NYCFC come back in town, New York Red Bulls, like it's, you know, it's something that we need to shore up and shore up quickly because it's getting to the business end of the season. Yeah, I mean, and but, you get to think that like, Joseph had another hat trick and we'll get into some of the statistics of his record breaking performance in a bit, but like right now, that's what he is. He's record breaking. He is playing incredibly well. I mean, his third goal, Obviously a mistake by DC, but he takes it so coolly and absolutely oh, yeah. destroys the keeper's Rounds soul the keeper. before oh. he finishes it off. And a few weeks back, we talked about are we relying too much on Joseph Martinez. At the time, I said no because I thought that this team honestly had the potential to play better. And it still does. But right now, I think Atlanta had actually, I've changed my opinion, they are relying too much on Joseph Martinez mm -hmm. because... There's not enough players playing to the level that they should. Mm -hmm. Miguel Almiron is struggling. I'm just going to call it what it is. Tata, if you go back and watch, he was pretty frustrated with some of the shots and the efforts yep. that Miguel Almiron was putting in. Mm -hmm. I think that part of it is Miggy might be trying to force the issue a little bit. Maybe he knows he's not playing well and he's trying to do something. True. And when that happens, usually you don't have your best performances. Mm -hmm. Again, I didn't think he had his best performance, no. just like he hasn't had his best season. That being said, he got his 10th assist. Uh, he got his 10th so assist. Yes, and yes. it's obviously easy when you're passing it to Joseph Martinez, yeah. but I think we need to keep in mind mm -hmm. this team didn't hit form until September of last season. No. It's July. No. So, as frustrating as it is, we have to hope that they do have that sudden change and that pickup in form. Mm -hmm. Obviously, last year it was a change in venue. This year, I don't know what it will be, but I'm hoping that they can figure it out. Because like you said, if you have a team like NYCFC who, despite a massive coaching change, have remained very, very consistent in their performances, right. or a team like Red Bull, who have already shown they can come in here, VAR and refereeing decisions aside, yep. and play a solid game and get a result. And Atlanta will have to improve, especially against those good teams, because DC United is a team that you should beat 3-1. It was a labored result, but they should be a team you beat. Orlando City, a team you should beat. But that's, at the end of the day, those aren't the teams you're playing to win trophies. You're playing the Red Bulls. You're playing the, you know, the NYCFCs. You're playing the Portland Timbers. You're playing these big sides that know what they're doing and are canny operators. And until Atlanta had to improve against those sides, especially at home, it's worrying, you know, going into the postseason and going into right. the regular season. Yeah, and you know, maybe it is. Uh, so, uh, you know, Miguel Miron and uh, Carlson and Vasquez were actually. Uh, it was reported that they were taking extra shooting practice uh, after uh, Tuesday's practice. And so that bodes well. Uh, maybe it is that spark of uh, Miguel Amiron who finds his form late in the season. And that's how we really ride into uh, the MLS playoffs. Maybe it's that. Hopefully, I mean, it's if something he can, like if, that. If Miguel but, can discover the form that he had, you know, in that September October run up until he got an unfortunate injury yeah. last year, mm -hmm. good luck everyone else. Because yeah. if Joseph Martinez is healthy and playing the way he is, mm -hmm. I see no reason that he's going to stop with how confident he is. Yeah. And you can get a Miguel Almiron firing. And honestly, mm -hmm. Tito Vajalba has almost been a forgotten man in a sense that yeah. he's had a few assists. But his season got off to a bit of a stop start with the fact injury, of his injuries and hamstrings, it's yeah. just been not consistent from him. But mm -hmm. we know he can play better. And yeah. I think we 
all know that he him excel, you know, he expects better of himself, mm -hmm. and he's a competitor. So mm -hmm. if those guys can start finding their form, and if Carlton can start playing more, he showed maybe he didn't have his great game, and he kind of left McCann a little bit on an island for that first goal. Mm -hmm. He's young, but I saw a lot of really promising signs from him. He's a oh. very confident young man, and mm -hmm. you can see the potential of him as a footballer, and you know what he will be able to do. So mm -hmm. it looks like we're going to see a little bit of him in the team for right now. We don't know how long that will be. But I think he showed that he belonged and he gave Toss House some food for thought about, you know, how much he should play and in his place in this team. Right. And, uh, yeah, and back to your thing about uh, Joseph Martinez and maybe the overall alliance, I think it's also we're playing through Joseph Martinez as well, which is, I mean, you know, when a striker is that hot, I mean... You, you ride that train. Exactly. And so, you know, you, you do play through him and you feed that beast because, yeah, you can see what he, he does when he beast. can score. Yeah, and... You know, he scores in bunches, he scores at a ridiculous rate. He actually scores at a rate of 0.82 goals per game, which is better than a goal per game. And the next closest person minutes, is 90 minutes. 82 points. minutes to go. I mean, that's yeah. insane. When you look at the statistics of other yeah. players who've been in this league, whether it be a David Villa, Sebastian Javinko, yeah. he is 20, <laughs> 30, 40 minutes ahead of these guys. Exactly. I mean, it's incredible at the rate that we are watching this man score goals. I mean, right now he's at 22 and 22. Remember, the record's 27, and I believe he has 12 games to match that record and then beat it. I think he's going to do that. Yeah, yeah. No, at this point, he's absolutely going to beat that. And uh, Assuming he stays healthy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And, um, yeah, and he also, of course, he got his sixth major league uh, soccer hat trick, and, you know, he broke that record already in one and a half seasons. That's just... 42 games. Yeah. Six 41 goals tricks. in 42 games. So ridiculous. All these stats are just... I mean, he's getting into that territory of, um, yeah, I mean, greatest MLS striker ever. I mean, it's getting there. I mean, I think, you know, uh, one more season here, one more season there. Uh, I, I can't even fathom the records that he's going to break. I mean, so. I believe, that, I don't know the exact goal record. I know it's not too far over 100, maybe in the 120s or so. Uh, yeah. It's Landon Donovan. Mm -hmm. If Martinez stays at Atlanta for, I'd say, five years and manages to stay healthy, I think he could easily have that goal, especially, yep. I mean, that record, considering, the, again, the rates that he's scoring at, mm -hmm. and the fact that he has more hat tricks than, I believe it's 10 MLS teams. 10 MLS teams, yeah, you, we'll show it right here, and that's insane. There's some good teams in there. And some of these teams have played a lot of games in Major League Soccer. Exactly. And again, him by himself has only played 42, and he has six. Yeah. Six. I mean, you look at Toronto, and they have, like, over, like, you know, it's like 300 or 500. And yeah, Sebastian like Javinko is actually has all five of their hat tricks. Yeah. I mean, you look at a team like Portland, not renowned for a lot. They don't have any. I mean, there's some teams in there. It's just absolutely incredible yeah. that one player has more. Not not to mention the fact that he has more hat tricks than all these teams. Right now, he has more goals than, I believe, three teams this season in Major yeah. League Soccer. Right. Which is just absolutely incredible. He's, yeah. what, 10 goals ahead of the next closest guy in the Golden Boot competition? Yeah, I mean, around about 9 or 10. Yeah, if yeah, anyone so. has criticism of Joseph Martinez at this point in time, I know they were there at the beginning of the yeah. season. He's always offside. He's a poacher. He gets tap-ins. I don't know what you're watching, and I have no words for you yeah. because you clearly have no appreciation of he's fantastic a complete talent. Striker. I mean, complete. he's five foot seven. Look at the amount of headed goals this man's scoring yeah. against players who are five, six, seven inches taller than him. I mean, there's pictures out there that Atlanta United tweeted where I don't know how high this man's vertical is, but it is literally insane. He almost jumped. It's five seven. It's, it's like five seven. It's his height. <laughs> I, I don't understand. I mean, there's this guy can do everything. Not to mention, yeah. he's incredibly brave. That first goal he scored against DC, yeah. he knows the keeper's there. He knows clattered. contact's coming, and he still does it. I mean, three out of his last four goals have been headers. Yeah. It's incredible. There is nothing this guy can't do. Not to mention this season, he's been dropping back deeper and having fantastic passes. And mm -hmm. I believe he's had more assists this season than he's had last season. Right. I don't know what else you could want from this guy. And on I mean, on defense, he's heading those. He's organizing those balls corners. Away. Yeah, I mean, in like, the first half against DC, doing, he yeah. organized. He came back, and he organized the defense, yeah. then won the header and cleared the ball himself. Right. I mean, this man is doing everything. He's the best player on this team right now. If he continues in this, he's hands down the MVP. I mean, uh, luckily for Atlanta United, he's already been to Europe, so he might not want to go back and experience right. that. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if you're a club in Europe. I would say you might want to be looking at someone who's scoring at this rate. It's true. That being said, Atlanta United, if someone comes calling, just offer Joseph the money. He loves it here. I think he wants to stay. I really want him to stay. 
Yeah, agreed. And um, and so moving on into uh, the rest of the game, uh, we saw the first MLS uh, appearance for Eric Rometty, the new boy. And, um, you know, obviously he wasn't on the pitch for very, very long. But, um, yeah, there was at one point he was about to, you know, spring on a counterattack, but and he was ref, fouled. The ref didn't play the advantage, and it was there. Yeah. It could have been the fourth goal for Joseph as well. It he really was in space. Been. Yeah, he could have even, yeah, scored for it. It's ridiculous. Yeah, oh, so, uh, but, yeah, Eric Meddy, I mean, uh, we didn't get to see his uh, spring long balls uh, thing that he can do. Um I mean, you know, but uh, it's a, a good, you know, good run out for him to, to be able to get some, some minutes and, you know, hopefully we'll see a little bit more time with him on the pitch. Uh, I think it'll probably most definitely happen, I think, now that uh, there is this elephant in the room situation as well uh, with Ezekiel Barco. But again, we'll get to that in a, in a bit. But uh, with the quotes from the, the team after the match, um, yeah, I mean, like, Joseph, he was saying that he thought he broke his nose two days before the match. And, uh, yeah. yeah, that's insane. And so he was bleeding. And so, he, dude, he's playing, like, You injured, saw it after baby. one of his goals yeah. on the screen. He was holding exactly. his nose and looking at it. And, I mean, right. this it's guy insane. is a war. Again, yeah. if you have a problem with him, I, I just <laughs> beg you to give me the reasons you don't like him. Because right. this guy is an absolute hero right now. Right. Indeed, indeed. And, uh, well, and moving on to a, uh, you know, kind of home home team hero, homegrown talent, uh, Andrew Carlton. Uh, Michael Parkers had this to say about his first MLS start. He said, I thought Andy did really well. I thought his touches were clean in the first half. He played simple. He helped create the first goal, which was obviously very important. And, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Andrew Carlton, you know, he's, uh, he's an important guy in our setup because yeah you know he's a guy that comes from powder springs georgia um you know he's our very first homegrown player it's something that you know every every atlanta united fan i think really wants to see him succeed because it's one of those very inspiring things like you could be him type of thing and so um you know this is just uh i think first of many hopefully with uh atlanta united that he gets you know, starts. So, um, I would say one yeah. thing on Andrew Carlton, though, despite this is his first start, please show some patience with the guy that's yes. only 17 years old. He's not going to come out and just start scoring where he's left, right, and center. So, right. I'd say definitely refrain from putting criticism on a kid that's obviously got a lot of pressure. And I think mm -hmm. he's aware of that because he knows the fans want him to do well. Right. So, I'd say just give this kid some patience, let him develop, let him make his mistakes and learn from them. And you're going to see a really good player in a few years' time if he can keep this up and you know keep this confidence level and keep playing because right. that's how he's going to get better is playing at MLS. And again, just let's take it easy with him. He's 17, but I'm excited for the future of this kid. I really, really am. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, he's a he's a type of player that uh, you know a lot of people heap a lot of expectations on him, but I think he's very level-headed. He's you know very modest, but he still has uh, that that swagger when he plays. And you can tell. I mean, he's uh, he's willing to you know take players on, dribble, uh, you know maybe uh, you know cross with his left. He's a right-footed player. I mean, there's yeah plenty of stuff that he's willing to try and do. And uh, you know there are some that obviously have said after this performance, uh, it's a very small sample size, but they were like you know we didn't re really miss very much with uh, Ezekiel Barco out. Um, and yeah, I mean Carlton did have a good match, but. I it's also it's, DC. Yeah, it's also DC. I think it's also, they sat off of him a little bit more. Uh, at Atlanta United 2, uh, there's more of an onus uh, of the attention being on him. And so that's why I think you don't really see as good of a performance maybe because, I mean, he's being marked, uh, you know, Out of a lot heavier. Almost. Yeah, and so, but with this, you know, there's obviously more... Uh, prominent players and more dominant players that the other team is really looking towards. So, uh, you know, Andrew Carlton has that space and time to be able to uh, to do that. And so, uh, you know, that may change really the more he plays, though. I mean, the more true. he plays and the more he performs, right. teams will adjust to that. 
there is, like you said, a small sample size on him right now. Mm -hmm. But make no mistake that once teams figure out what he can do and what he can't do, mm -hmm. they'll try to focus on his weaknesses and he'll get kicked a few times. And right. when he faces that adversity, that's where we really see what kind of player he is. So again, I'm excited about the future, but I think everyone mm -hmm. definitely needs to relax, maybe not put too much expectation and criticize him too much when he does inevitably make right. mistakes. Yeah. And, uh, and speaking of Zeppio Barco, uh, let's move on into the In the News segment. And of course, the big bombshell dropped by Dirty South Soccer in terms of uh, what the reasons why that Ezekiel Barco was suspended. Uh, he, is, he was suspended for the DC United match and suspended for the Montreal Impact match this uh, upcoming weekend. And uh, so they said, quote, it's Ezekiel Barco benched after alleged romantic overtures toward teammate's girlfriend. And, um, you know, so we'll try to respect this situation as much as possible because uh, it's a private matter that I'm sure that they want to keep as in-house as possible. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, uh, we broke the, uh, the rumor of him being suspended for two matches before, um, before the match uh, on Saturday. And yeah, I mean, uh, it's essentially, it's a, a very, very delicate situation that, um, yeah, I mean, when you have this type of disruption in the, not just the locker room, but in the whole team setup, because I mean, you know, I, I think obviously the whole team knows about it. And so it makes for a very awkward situation all around, obviously. And so, um, you know, it, it's going to be very, very, very interesting to see what's going to happen uh, going forward in terms of, um, you know, how, you know, Ezekiel Barker is going to integrate back into the team because Tata Martino has said that, you know, he's going to have to earn it. He's going to have to earn back his place in the starting 11. And that's uh, that's very huge. I mean, that's uh, that means he's essentially starting from you know square square one, and um, you know that that means that you know uh, he's really got to kind of look within himself and figure out uh, how to be you know a a person first, and then a teammate second, and then uh, getting back in the team you know uh, an Atlanta United player, and so uh, you know there's a lot going on with the, that whole uh, setup, and I'm sure. There's uh, going to be more developing news coming out. Hopefully, they can keep as much in-house as possible because, yeah, I mean, if there is, uh, you know, a, a result of somebody, uh, you know, maybe having to uh, be transferred or something, it's, you know, that's that's terrible stuff uh, that we don't really want to hear. But the more stuff that gets out, obviously, the it makes it harder for the club to, to do business and it yeah. may be a hindrance. Yeah. So it's uh, it's all just, uh, you know, we got to tiptoe around the situation, I feel like, uh, in the time being until, uh, you know, I, the sources are, uh, you know, apparently legit. And so uh, what's come out is, um, you know, factual. apparently factual. But uh, in terms of more details, I think it's something that we just need to, uh, you know, Wait kind and of, see on. Yeah, we were, and, and you're right we, about yeah. a lot of it. I mean, it's still a developing situation, and it's far, far, far from ideal. Um, yeah. You touch on really pretty much everything in that, and it's it, for right now. I think it's best, especially for us with this platform. We don't really want to say anything that we don't know. You know, that we don't base in fact, or we don't want to make any judgments or say anything that that can turn out to be wrong. Because again, it is still developing, and it's a very delicate situation, like mm -hmm. you said. It's not ideal. Um, there have been a lot of incidents like this throughout soccer history. Yep. Um, again, we don't know all the details to this incident specifically, so it's hard to say which you know of those incidents that this is similar to. I mean, you have many of them. The 1998 World Cup with the USA. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah with Ronaldo and uh, and Harks, of course. You yeah. have that. You have the John Terry Wayne Bridge situation. Yeah. I mean, you have all kinds of situations. This this is not ideal, though. At the end yeah. of the day, this is not ideal. We, we don't know, again, the specific details, but you know it's really going to show what kind of a player, what kind of a person Zachiel Barco is. Does, does he buckle down and try to earn his teammates' respect? I mean, I guess the, the, the closest thing you might have to this recently in American sports would be with the Lakers mm -hmm. and the sharing of you know the, that locker room information to the public and right. you know, that sees a player get traded away So because yeah. cause that player was no longer respected or trusted by his teammates. And yeah. if you're not trusted by your teammates, then how can you be expected to play and perform on the field? Mm -hmm. So... 
you know, you said he's starting from square one. He's probably starting from less than square one, if we're being yeah. honest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that'll take some time, but we'll see in the coming weeks how this situation develops. And I think when, if it comes to a conclusion, I think that'll be a better time for us to maybe make judgments and assessments on mm -hmm. what happened, how it was handled, and who did what wrong. Right. But until then, right now, I think it's best for all of us to reserve as much judgment as we can, mm -hmm. wait for the continuing details, which will probably come out, and just hope that the five stripes can ignore all this and continue on their season and keep winning because at the end of the day this is a distraction yeah. and what matters is not what happens off the field but what happens on it right. and as we saw this past weekend they perform well without him they have another big match coming this weekend against a, a montreal team that's been playing relatively well and then they have the all-star break so mm -hmm. we'll see what happens moving forward but hopefully the team can be mentally strong enough to continue on and keep putting results on the board and, and keep marching towards the end of the season and hopefully trophies right and uh and speaking of the all-star break uh so ezekiel barco is reported by doug robertson to be playing at the all-star game as well so uh you know uh it'll for be, now I'd yeah say. for now uh, and that'll be interesting so um and so moving on into our uh the champions league update uh, it seems that we are still two points up top uh, above NYC FC, so it's 99 to 97 points. Uh, and so, you know, that's our other way in. It's a, kind of that backdoor way in into Champions League. And so, you know, hopefully that still uh, holds up because. I mean, I mean, they we're, have games in hand. I mean, you yeah. have to count that. It's just we're like very the Supporters Shield our, our and form. the Eastern Conference. The teams yeah. behind us in Red Bull and NYC FC have games in hand yeah. and despite coaching changes they're still playing really well so right. we'll see what happens but mm -hmm. you know as of now we're where we want to be but yeah. we'll know by the end of the season and you know so there's a lot of uh teams in the east that are very very strong of, of, of course uh we've named a lot of them but um you know when toronto fc last year when they won uh the supporter shield it was with uh 2.03 points per game and uh you know where we see you know, at least five teams hovering around that area. Um, so the next best last year was 1.68 points per game. And this year, Atlanta's at two points per game. NYC also at two. New York Red Bulls at two. Uh, FC Dallas at 1.95. And LAFC at 1.84. Just insane. Like, it, it, I think it shows how dominant the, the top half is and then maybe just how poor the the bottom half is yeah i mean the crazy thing about both nycfc and red bull again not to beat a dead horse they have games in hand yeah. and again not to beat a dead horse but despite the fact that both have had coaching changes they are mm -hmm. still performing really really well mm -hmm. which on a league side shows that they're well-run clubs which is a positive because i think it's actually maybe it costs atlanta a supporter show this year but it pushes you and it's teams pushing mm -hmm. each other and maybe there does you know develop a divide between those top and bottom clubs but that's kind of how football is everywhere yeah. but if you have those top clubs that are running well that is good for the league and i think that it's good that especially in the east we have rivals that we can measure ourselves against and mm -hmm. keep performing and keep pushing each other especially as a player mm -hmm. when you see teams out there winning you want to beat those teams and atlanta United, obviously not satisfying results against NYCFC and not a satisfying result against Red Bull so far. So they have those markers. They want to put those down and they want to keep performing. And the fact that you're seeing teams going after a record that was like, wow, Toronto broke a record and possibly three teams are going to yeah. beat that same record this season, mm -hmm. which is incredible to see. And it speaks, you know, again, to the quality of the league and how it's continuing to get better and better, which is good. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, yeah, g going back to the uh, the All-Star game, the, uh, the ticket sales are ridiculous and you know we wouldn't expect anything less uh, apparently there are approaching 65,000 tickets sold already for the all-star game and that's huge I'm sure that uh, Darren Eels and you know the rest of the front office want you know a record broken in Atlanta they love records um, being broken that's exactly for sure. you know and so that's something that uh, you know if uh, if it does surpass then you know that's another little notch that uh, we can uh, put in our uh, you know put in our belt so but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so there was another interesting stat uh, of all the interesting stats that we've kind of thrown about this uh, this episode, in that uh, you know our old friend VAR, um, yeah, it's uh, so at home we have we are tied with the most uh, VAR calls at home um, with Orlando City, and they have had two less games than us, so. 
pretty ridiculous. Uh, we essentially are, yeah, as the eye test, uh, you know, testifies and also, you know, the actual stat testifies, we are seeing a ridiculous amount of VAR calls. And, um, I think we can all agree that uh, not yeah. many of them have been satisfying. Yeah. Maybe one or two here, like the Miggy penalty earlier, mm -hmm. and that's about it, really. Aside from that, not so satisfied about VAR. Fun fact, mm -hmm. we'll touch on both VAR and Orlando City a little bit later. Yeah, definitely. But uh, we're, we're going to move on to Atlanta United 2. Uh, so Atlanta United 2, they played Richmond Kickers to a 1-1 draw this past weekend. John Gallagher scoring again. He's uh yeah no he's looking really really nice as a you know as a striker as a as a winger he's a as a guy who you know not only is getting headers but like uh, yeah he's scoring it with his feet I mean he's pushing some of the guys that uh, you know uh, maybe fringe players on uh, on the first team and I think much better for it. And, you can't uh, forget about the fact that he's not on Atlanta United too, but Gordon Wild is scoring yeah. some bangers for Charleston Battery Absolutely. as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, that's a really good thing when you think about it, though. You have these guys both on loan and at Atlanta United too mm -hmm. that are playing really well mm -hmm. and pushing for you know spots in the first team. And that keeps those guys in the first team, Joseph Martinez aside, mm -hmm. to keep trying to you know to perform because if they don't, you have someone else that can step yeah, in. Waiting and that's a hallmark of a good club. Mm -hmm. The best clubs have quality and depth throughout their age ranks, which constantly forces guys to fight for their place and to keep improving. Mm -hmm. That's just another good sign of Atlanta United doing things the right way. Right. And also, uh, you know, both guys are MLS Super Draft guys uh, from this year, 2018. Um, and, you know, uh, this is interesting that uh, Paul McDonough, our VP, uh, has, you know, he, I'm sure a big part to play in that Super Draft in our previous, uh, you know, and also in the whole, like, setup of the team, but uh, he's reportedly being poached by uh, MLS Miami with, uh, you know, David Beckham, and that's just, uh, you know, there's reports that he's, uh, you know, kind of already going to be uh, their their GM, uh, I mean, who I knows, mean, we'll see. We'll see, I, yeah. I, I, I would say this, and as much as, as frustrating as that would be, especially considering the setup the United would have, yeah. it's also a massive compliment, because yeah. both LAFC and Miami have spoken about what Atlanta United have done, and about how they want to model themselves after Atlanta United, mm -hmm. and if you want to talk about an impression on the game and on the league, when teams are looking at you and going, that's how we want to do it, because they're doing it the right way, that says a lot. And as frustrating as it is because I want to win trophies and I don't want them to win trophies, mm -hmm. if those teams become solid teams, again, it's just one of those things that it makes it better for the league. And I know that I bang on that a lot, but the higher quality the teams around us are, it forces this club itself to become better. And we know the aspirations that this club has to win. Mm -hmm. So if clubs around us are doing well, you know that this club's going to continue to do things the right way. Right. And again, everything that I added are doing, those teams can copy it. But can they do it as well as Atlanta United? Yeah. Only time will tell. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. But, um, you know, for now, I think it's uh, hands off Paul McDonough. Yes. And, uh, Piss yeah. off, David Beckham. I love right. you, but in this case, I don't. <laughs> Go away. Yeah. Hands and, off. <laughs> you know, and he just signed a, a, a contract last year. And so, you know. Uh, they can pass a lot of money then. If they yeah, want. exactly. They If they uh, if they got him, essentially, they would have to transfer us something of return, of value. So, uh, so let's, yeah, we, we talked about the standings a little bit, but... Let's get in depth a little bit into how they look right now. Uh, Atlanta United are top with 44, and New York uh, New York City FC are with 40 points. And of course, they have played two fewer games. Uh, New York Red Bulls sit at 38, and they sit with uh, or they have th three games in hand. It's just yeah. Um, again, we've uh, kind of reiterated this maybe for about a month or so, or even more now. But uh, yeah, once they get those games played, which will be in will the next see. month or so. I mean, yeah. right now NYCFC <laughs> are playing two games a week, and and then mm -hmm. Red Bull are playing as well. So I think by the end of August, we'll really see where these teams are, you right. know, paired up against each other. If they do win those games in hand, and all things stay even, mm -hmm. you'll have three teams separated by three points at the top of the table in the East, right. and the gap from them to the next team being Columbus Crew mm -hmm. would be pretty substantial. So you definitely have three clear front running teams right now in the East. The big challenge for Atlanta United is, yes, you want to win the Supporters Shield, but you want to be one of those top two teams that can have that home foot advantage, mm -hmm. secure those buys, and make sure you are in the right position at the end of the season. And that actually you know, kind of takes us into the Supporters Shield rankings as well, which is 
pretty darn similar. Mm -hmm. The exception being, insert Dallas into that, they've also played two fewer games and they are on 39 points. So if they were to win those games in hand, they would go one point above Atlanta United. So Atlanta United, right now, like we've been saying, we've been playing well, but there's a lot of room for improvement. And there's those teams behind us snapping at those heels. The team's going to have to perform, and honestly, with those distractions, not ideal. They have to put those behind them, have to keep performing. But again, I talked about it earlier. They didn't find their form until September of last year. So fingers crossed that this team can get things worked out because once they start firing, they can put a lot of points on the board. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the comparison to last season, they're almost at 50 points. The total they had last year was, what, 55? And they're 11 off from that, and they have 12 games to play. So there's a lot still there to be had, new records to be broken, new best seasons to be had. So not all is negative, it is positive. This team is heading in the right direction. And I think that's one thing we have to take from it all. Yeah. And I think uh, something that's, you know, let's moving on to, uh, you know, our next segment, uh, something that's maybe not moving in the right direction, uh, but yes. uh, hopefully it does in the future. Hopefully there's a lot of room for improvement, but uh, let's get into our Wasteman of the Week segment. Yes, my favorite time because I get to make so make fun of someone for being an absolute Muppet. And this week I'm gonna try to pronounce his name correctly. It is Silviu Petrescu. This is gonna be one of those really weird moments you're not gonna see a lot. So if for some reason any fans of that team from Florida watch these videos, I don't know why you would because I know you don't like us. But if you do, I'm actually feeling sorry for you and I'm siding with you for once. If anyone managed to see the Orlando City Columbus crew game, you would have noticed that there was an absolute howler from the official. Here at Atlanta United, we are quite used to seeing this go against us. For some reason, referees are just awful when they play it when they come into Mercedes Benz. In this situation, this man gives a penalty for I genuinely don't know. Um, there is a foul in the box that, um, funny enough, isn't even reviewed by VAR. I don't know what the VAR was doing. Maybe he fell asleep by eating too many donuts or he was doing something else, not paying attention to the game, not doing his job, clearly because if he was doing it, he would have said, hey man, you might want to have a look at this mm -hmm. because uh, nothing happened. I mean, the guy jumps in the air, gets hit in the back and falls on his back. I don't know about physics, but usually when you get contact in the back, you fall forwards, mm -hmm. not backwards. All in all, it was embarrassing. It was indefensible as a call. And yet, Pro, the referee, mm -hmm. they, they actually defended this man. They said, nope, it was the right call. I, I don't know what they're doing, but I will say this. We have harped on VAR. We have harped on the refs. We did it last week. If MLS wants to move forward as a league, it has to improve. They have to change the way they do VAR, have multiple guys in the booth, move it to a centralized location in New York, train the referees better, pay them better. That has to improve because at the end of the day, if those do not improve, this league will not improve because these mistakes will continue to be made and these mistakes are inexcusable. I would expect this on my Monday sevens league or a Sunday league game, not in major league soccer, not when you have a, a system designed to help you avoid these mistakes. And yet they continually happen over and over and over again throughout the league. Until this is fixed, the league will never improve and never be seen as a higher league because honestly, this is an absolute joke. So Silvio Petrescu, or however the hell you pronounce your stupid name, your stupid ref, and you are Waste Man of the Week. And guys, getting into our match preview, it's Saturday against Montreal Impact, 7 p.m. at Saputo Stadium in Montreal. And, uh, you know, it's a, a matchup against a team that, you know, are on decent form. Yeah, they've actually won four of their last six games and all five of their last home games that they've played. They beat Vancouver two weeks ago in a 1-0 match, which is kind of saying something because Vancouver is not that great. However, they did have a very, very frustrating 2-2 draw against Portland Timbers in Portland this past weekend in which Evan Bush made two really, really, really bad errors. If yeah. you have not seen them, you should go wow. look at them. It's their howlers. There's no other way about it. Yeah. Honestly, he'd be waste man of the week if there wasn't a terrible ref, but if there's a terrible ref, I'm always going to yeah. pick them first. Now, yeah, we've already played Montreal Impact once this time. We played them earlier this season, beat them 4-1. However, we've only made one trip to Montreal before, and that was last season, and honestly, it didn't go too great. Yeah, definitely. It was uh, you know an LGP red card, uh, softest thing ever, um, and talk eventually about, got rescinded. Talk about terrible refs. Yeah, it too was bad VAR wasn't there. Oh, wait, exactly. it probably would have gone against us anyway, <laughs> of course it would. Yeah. But, uh, but luckily it got rescinded uh, after that match and you know LGP was able to play. But uh, I think we also saw uh, Kevin Kratz get kind of slapped around in the face. Like it was, there was just a lot of questionable things. I think, yeah, even Miguel Miron got just hacked down and no call. 
Um, a stupid goal at the end yeah. of the game to give them the win. Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, you know, so hopefully we don't get as much drama up there. And, uh, you know. Fingers crossed. Yeah, exactly. Who knows with refs these days, though? <laughs> exactly. And, uh, you know, but it's something that, uh, you know, so they stand in fifth with 28 points. Uh, so, you know, they're a playoff team at this moment, uh, even though they're a little bit far off from us. But, uh, you know, I think. Even with our road form, it's something that you know we need to watch out for this team. Although you know, with their goalkeeper, I think that we we could have. Them, I mean, know? absolutely, you, you got to take chances against that guy. But yeah. definitely, if you want to have a guy on Montreal to look at, we said at the beginning of the season is Ignacio Piate. Mm -hmm. And that guy is an absolute beast for Montreal. He leads him in both goal and assists with ten goals and eight assists respectively. Mm -hmm. That guy is going to be the man you're looking out. Four and he, also and he can has, score from nothing. He can score from literally anywhere. Yeah. I mean, give him any space, and it's like he'll shoot from distance, and it'll end up in the back of the net. Safir Tidier is their second leading goal scorer with five goals, but Piate, he's gonna be the guy. Mm -hmm. You saw Atlanta players showing him respect after the game earlier this season. He is absolutely the danger man that Atlanta will have to keep in check if they want to get a good result mm -hmm. leaving Montreal. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, so uh, of course, Joseph Martinez leads the league with goals in 22. Um, and Miguel Miron is right up there with 10 assists. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, we are very stout, uh, you know, offensively as well. And so we match up well against them. But uh, so that leads us into our formation and what we predict will happen. Of course, Ezekiel Barco is out uh, against this team and out indefinitely in this case as well. Um, so I think it's very similar, if not the exact maybe same exact way. same as uh, DC United and McCann in as left back and Andrew Carlton in as the left wing. Yeah, I think the only changes you might see there is you might see maybe Ambrose come back in for McCann, but I think yeah. in this situation, McCann is probably your best situation because of the danger that Piazza offers, because you're playing on the road. You yeah. don't need that ambition going forward, especially right. considering that, you know, Montreal can ship goals, especially when their keeper is making errors in the way that he is. I think that the crossing that Milan had been doing he very clearly struggles with that. I think Joseph Martinez will definitely be looking at that and thinking he can grab a few more goals to put in, to put in his pocket. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. And you know, aside from that, I don't really see any chance. I think it's still too early for Remedi. I think he might make a second half cameo again. Yeah. That being said, you know, this team's been playing pretty darn well, and Tato's been putting out pretty much the exact same eleven for the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. So. I think they're both in agreement that, that we'll see the same team. But going from that, you know, that kind of takes us into our predictions. And, you know, how are you feeling about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I feel like I'm feeling pretty confident about this game, actually. It's, uh, it's a game that I think we can win pretty handily. I think, uh, you know, they're at home. They're going to want to attack us, um, you know, and they're a, a type of team that uh, wants to attack as well. And so I think we can pull off a 2-0 win here. What about you? 2-0? I'm going to go with 2-1. I think Atlanta United will get two goals. I think Justin Martinez will be another goal scorer again. He's going to add to his total. I agree with you. They're going to attack. They're going to leave space open, which Atlanta United will look to exploit. Mm -hmm. Atlanta United weren't you know, very great defensively last week. It's something I think they will work on and look to improve. That being said, I think Piatti, he's so good. I think yeah. he'll probably make a goal at some point in time for, for Montreal, but I'm going with 2-1. I, I am confident with you though. I think we'll win. And I think 2-1, I think actually might sound closer than the match itself might be. Right. But again, with, with their keeper being in the form that he is and, and their defense being leaky the way that it is, even though they've been pretty decent winning seven out of 10 games at home this year and winning their last five, Atlanta and I love nothing more than to snap a winning home streak. So exactly. I think I agree with you. And I think we're going to get the three points leaving Montreal on Saturday. Yeah. And so that gets us into our five strike weekly question of the day. So what is Yeah. It? And with Joseph Martinez being the topic of really the main discussion with him scoring all these goals. My question to you guys is he's already got the record. But does Joseph Martinez score another hat trick in MLS this season? He's already got two. So well, is it two or is it three? Yeah, no, uh, I think it's three. Is yeah. it three? Yeah. I don't know. This guy, honestly, he <laughs> scores more, as many goals. I can't keep track of it. But does Joseph Martinez score another MLS hat trick this season? And if you say yes, I'm curious, who do you think it'd be against? Probably a team at home, in my opinion, because that's where he loves his hat tricks. But get down in the comments below and let us know what you guys think. Yep. So guys, that's it for us today. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video because it really does help us a lot. Like this video. And for Tanner McLeod, I'm AJ. Thank you guys so much for watching.